In this video, we're going to discuss how to calculate the reaction rate constant. So uh, at this point, we've talked about the reaction rate. We've looked at a couple of different ways to determine the reaction rate using differential rate laws and integrated rate laws. One thing that's kept showing up is this reaction rate constant K, right? Uh, this expression is the one we derived in a previous video. This was the rate equation for or the integrated rate law for a first order reaction. And we note that we have this reaction rate constant K. And in one of the previous videos, I told you that it's really important. It's directly proportional to the rate, uh, directly proportional to how fast a reaction is going to be. So it's really important that we have ways to determine this uh, reaction rate constant in practice. Now, if you notice, like I said in the previous video, these integrated rate laws have the same uh, form as Y equals MX plus B, right? So one way that you can determine the reaction rate constant is to get some experimental data, be able to plot it. If you can fit it to the straight line equation, then the rate constant will be your slope, right? So keep in mind, this is MX plus B. M is the slope of your, of your straight line. So if you can plot this, um, this, uh, this reaction with its concentration with respect to time, get a straight line relationship, the slope of that line will be your reaction rate constant. So let's look at an example of how we can use that knowledge in order to calculate a rate constant for a reaction. So, uh, so in this problem, it says the decomposition of N2O5 in the gas phase was studied at constant temperature. So we have the decomposition of this species into uh, nitrogen dioxide and O2. So it says the data in the table below, the table here, was collected for the concentration of N2O5 at various times. Use the data to confirm that the reaction is first order and find the value of the reaction rate constant K. So let's just focus on that first part. We have the data here. In order to confirm that the reaction is first order, we have to plot this data of the natural log of our, the concentration of our reactant over time and see if we get a straight line relationship. So what I've done here in the plot to the bottom left is that I've plotted each of these points, zero to two, negative 2.3, 50 to negative 2.6, right? Obviously this is just kind of a sketch. It's not drawn to scale. You could plot it in Excel if you want a more accurate representation, but our, our sketch will do here for now for this video. Um, but yeah, so basically I've plotted all this data that's in the table, plotted each of these points. And as you can see, if we were to fit a straight line to it, right? No, that line's not exactly straight, my, my drawing there. But, uh, but if you fit a straight line to it, you get a straight line relationship. So fitting this and showing that we get a straight line, this gives us confirmation that this reaction is indeed first order, right? Because we're plotting the natural log of N2O5, the concentration of N2O5 versus time. If it's a straight line, then that means it fits it can be fit to this equation. The second part of that is asking us to find the value of the reaction rate constant K. That's basically asking us to solve for the slope, right? So let's do it. So the slope here, right? Keep in mind, slope is rise over run, right? So delta Y over delta X. So basically what you wanna do is to pick a time interval plug in those numbers and solve for your slope, right? Keeping in mind that the Y in this case is going to be the difference in the natural log of N2O5. And the X, the run in this case, will be uh, time, right? So picking a time interval, right? I'll pick, uh, you know, picking this uh, interval of the, of the whole line, so 400 to zero, we have a difference of, you know, negative 5.075 at 400 seconds minus the negative 2.303 from time zero and the total time elapsed in that time interval is 400 seconds. So that gives us a slope of negative 6.93 times 10 to the negative three per seconds, right? So keep in mind these natural logs, these are, um, you know, unitless quantities, but the uh, denominator has seconds. So that per second still remains there, right? So this is actually the value of K, right? 
our reaction rate constant. Right, whatever that, that slope is, right, is going to be the uh, value of your reaction rate constant. Well, actually, right, so keeping in mind this, this sign here, right, because for this line, it's going to be negative K. So this is your slope. K would just be positive of this, right, 6.93 times 10 to the negative 3 per second, right? Okay, cool. All right, so that's going to be your value for K. Okay, so uh, so from there, right, so now that we have our K, right, we've used the data to get the slope to get K, right? Now, let's look at what part B is asking us. Part B is asking us to calculate the concentration of N205 at 150 seconds after the start of the reaction. Keep in mind, that's a, that's a point that we don't have a data point for, right? We don't have a data point for 150, but knowing that, we, knowing that the reaction is first order, having calculated the reaction rate constant, we now have the power to be able to calculate what the concentration would have been at 150 if we took a measurement, right? So let's do it. So, um, so let me do a different slide here so I have more room, right? So we have our equation, right? We know that since it's first order, it follows this equation, right? Ln N205 is equal to negative KT plus Ln N205 right? Concentration, the initial concentration of N205, right? Okay. So what we want to do here for part B is we want to solve for the concentration after 150 seconds. So the concentration at 150 seconds, right? In fact, I can put a subscript 150 here, right? If this is our initial time at time zero, this will be our time after 150 seconds, right? So uh, what we're gonna do is we have our initial natural log for the initial concentration, right? If we go back to our data, that's gonna be this value here. We know what LN of our concentration is gonna be at zero, right, at time zero. So we can go ahead and plug that in and we have our um, re reaction rate constant as well. All right, so we got everything we need. So 150 is gonna be equal to um, our reaction rate constant, which is gonna be negative 6.93 times 10 to the negative three per second, right? The negative of our rate constant times our time, right? So our time is the final time that's elapsed here. We want to figure out what it is, what's, what it's going to be at 150. So we just put 150 seconds there plus uh, neg or negative 2.303, right? Getting that data from the table. So uh, when we multiply these, right? Keeping in mind, keeping our track of our units here, units here cancel out. Right, with seconds there cancel out. So you'll have a unitless quantity subtracted from a uni unitless quantity, right? So we'll have negative 1.040 minus 2.303. And so that gives you negative 3.343, right? So looking at this natural log, negative 3.343, if we go back to the table, right, fits right in there, right? It's very believable, right, from our prediction and looking at the, the rate of this reaction, that that would be about our, um, our the natural log of our concentration at 150, right? Seems to fit. Okay, but that's actually not what we were asked to solve for, right? If we go back and say calculate the concentration of N205 at that time. So we have a little bit more algebra to do, right? So we got N205, the natural log of N205. Right. So what we need to do is do the algebra here. The, nat the, op the inverse of the natural log is the E exponential. Right. So you want to take the exponential of both sides. And then so that'll give you N205. 150 would be E to the negative 3.343. Right. So that will give you a concentration of 0 0.0353 molar. Right. That would be the concentration of N205 
after 150 seconds. So think about what we just did there. Like I said, this was a data point that was a measurement that we didn't take. This was a timestamp that we did not have a measurement for. But since you know it's a first order reaction, since you know it's, rates, it's rate constant, you have the power to be able to take that information and be able to tell, tell yourself or figure out what would be the concentration at any time interval, any time stamp, right? Um, so I would challenge you, take a random time stamp in here, see if you can figure it out, see if you can figure out at 250 or 275 or 320, right? And see if it fits with the data, be able to use this equation to be able to predict the concentration of this reactant at any point in this reaction.